Hi everyone, welcome back. It's Lonnie. Grace Blossoms for You is the channel you're watching. If you're new, welcome. If you're not so new, welcome anyways. Um, so last week I did some watercoloring and I made some, I'll call them cutouts because that's what I did with them. And I liked it. I already put it in my journal and I'll show you here. This is a watercolor that I did. And then I made like a tuck on the side of a page with it. And of course, our last video I think was the, um, the heart, the heart edge. Somewhere around here, this one. But I also watercolored and then punched the hearts out and put those on there. That's not a tuck or anything, that's just fastened down. But um, I like this idea too. And what I was thinking was that these would be great for like clusters. And then I saw a couple of people um, using coffee to do some watercoloring and I thought I want to try that. I saw this a while ago at artcd, artcd.com and um, she has a, a, t a lesson there. I vaguely looked at it that was a while ago so let's see what I remember. Um, So I have two coffees here. One is, I tried to get it really strong. I used instant coffee and this one is not as strong, but I tell you the smell is really strong. So um, I think I used Maxwell House, I'm not even sure. But yeah, see if you don't like it really strong, you might have to look for, you know, not such a strong smelling brand. I don't know how to, avoid that but so what I've gone ahead and done is I lightly coffee dyed some Walmart brand watercolor paper and <laughs> this is the result of my trimmer so you can see it's not so sharp so what I've done is cut a few different size pieces and so what I want to do and what I'm interested in is to do some more cutout ones and some more um, page edge ones. And so I just want to see how that works. Also, these ones can be used for labels because they're, they're a fairly nice size. Um, from the last one I did, I was able to get quite a few that would be suitable for labels. So now I just want to do them in more of a sepia tone. So play with me. Let's see what happens here. I'm going to do the long strip first just because I have a lot more of those. That's the edge of the paper. All right, so I'm going to use a thin, well, I'm going to start with the very small one and then move up to a larger one. Okay, so this one should be the next size up. Doesn't look like it's very clean. I have a piece of um, paper towel to mop up spills. All right, so I'm just gonna see if my brush is clean because I was using it for something else. All right, so this is kind of an off-white now. So what I was thinking I still love to do leaves. I just find them the easiest. So just going to roughly make like the, 
the shape of a leaf here. And this would probably work better if you had um, like expensive paper that does the the wet on wet blending really well. But this actually for cheap watercolor paper isn't bad. So I took the light one and I dropped the darker one in. So I'm gonna see how that affects things. Then I'm going to just See, to me, these remind me of fall because, yeah, I know they're not all, um, the leaves aren't all brown, but the, the leaves in the song are all brown. <laughs> and yes, it's early morning here. How can you tell? Um, California Dreaming. Yeah that song. The Mamas and the Papas. Oh my goodness, that's an oldie. Okay, so for that one, I just wanted it to dry light. And then I'm just gonna change the angle. You can also leave some blank spots there. And then take some of the dark and then just drop it in. That way it'll just go where the wet is. Something like that. So yeah. So how is your day going? It's Monday morning here when I'm filming. So yeah, another thing you could do is go right with the dark one. And of course, if you add more dark, it will get more dark. You'll have darker splotches. So that's kind of cool. And none of the other ones are dry yet, so I can't try what I wanted to do there. I actually like the uh, darker one. I know, I'm too impatient. What I like about this one too, it gets kind of an outline on it, which is cool. It would be like that coffee ring you get when you... um you know, spill coffee on something and then, yeah, so I really like the uh, dark one instead of the lighter one. But I think there's room for both. Oops, too much. I think I should use a bigger brush. This one is kind of teeny and it takes longer. So we'll see how that bleeds. And then, is there anything dry on here yet? Maybe the very first one. Nope, it's not dry yet, but okay, so I put some darker stuff in the middle. All right, I'll put that to the side for now, and then we'll see what happens with it. Okay, so I'm going to try the, the one for the journal card or the cutout next, and I am going to switch to my larger one. I kind of need one in the size between these two, I think. But the only other one I have is a lot larger. So 
will have to make do. So I'm just going to mop that copy up with this one. And then just start kind of hard to see from what I'm doing over here so like I said I've seen people do this before and I've always wanted to try it so I just thought I would take you along for my coffee explore here and two if you wanted to make like um, a mass batch of labels that were a sepia color. This would work really well. You would just do like layers. Maybe I should try that. Okay, so then you can just drop the darker stuff in. and then see where it goes, how far it goes. The bleeding would work really well on the expensive watercolor paper, like arches, but I, I don't have, a, I mean, I have some, but I thought I would see if I even like this and then if I, if I fall in love with it, then I'll go to the expensive paper. So, again, then you have to let it dry. So I'll put that over here for now. And I'll bring this one back, see what happened. It grew some fuzz or something. That's kind of cool. Um, I think for the detail work, which is what I want to do next, the little brush would probably be good. So if I wanted to, um, like give it some veins or something, it's still not so dry that, or the coffee's really wet. I don't know if you can... If you can get it much stronger than what I have here, but I kind of wanted to try one with just the the dark and then the veins. Yeah, it would work. You just have to not grab so much paint or coffee. I tried to get mine as strong as I could, but. And two, this would probably work better if I hadn't cut them into strips because they're kind of leaning, bent. I was thinking, you know, with the different layers, you get like outlines and more interesting um, you know, the layers with the color, different colors and the different saturations. And... and then for the full effect, I guess we'd have to wait for it to dry again. I don't want outli to outline them at this moment because I was thinking I wanted to do that in black so maybe just a little bit on the inside just like a hint to give like a little suggestion of a pattern there so far I guess I like it, except I 
not too confident about the adding the layers. So we'll see what happens with this. That one was kind of fun. I think because it was so light and then when I went in with the dark because it was dry so that one worked out pretty good. I should get some nice lines out of that one. So okay then that one is not dry yet. I did pretty heavy-handed on that one. Let me try another one with just the light. And too, you wouldn't have to draw leaves, you could, or paint leaves, you could do something else too. Yeah, I already kind of don't like this because it's so light, but that's my my fault because I chose to do with the light. Because I figure you can always go darker and that's where the interest comes in, but you kind of need to start with something. Too, maybe my leaves just aren't big enough, I don't know. It's hard to see what I'm doing here. Okay, I'm kind of wanting to try what it would look like with the just dark. Look at that. This immediate difference. Love it. And two, I switched back to the smaller brush. I just feel I have a lot more control with it. So. I'm purposely leaving some um, lighter areas so that um, there'll be a contrast. Okay, let's see, anything else dry? Oh, that one really got lots. Okay, I'm just going to do this. Add some more dark to it so then it can bleed. Go where it wants to. That way I've got the lighter stuff at the end already. And I've got some medium stuff in the middle. And then the darker stuff will be at the base of the leaf. And I want to do the same with this one. Get it even darker here. Kind of see where that goes. That one's dry enough, I can kind of lead the coffee where I want it to go. Totally just playing today, I guess. Yesterday I was watching um, Creation Cece, I think she's called. 
she was doing a play on fish. So I played along. Show you what I made. It was like this. So after she painted the fish, she went in and doodled. I tried, but I almost felt like the doodling wrecked the um, rest of it. But there's interest there. It just took a really long time. But yeah, that's what I made. Go check her out, Creation CC. Okay, so that's another one to dry. So this is a really light one and yeah, we get to play with it now. If I let this one dry again in between, I could even go in and add another darker spot towards the bottom of the leaf. But yeah, I'll leave that one for now. This one, I don't know, it's almost easier to do when they're still wet for me. But I will try to make like a center. Maybe the shadowy part of the stem, I don't know. And again, like I said, I plan to outline these in black later, so. I just think sometimes we want something in neutral colors for decorating. And this might be good for that. This is like a liner pen which is nice but it requires a very soft touch okay so there's that one put that over here for now this is the first one I did. It's mostly dry except where I added the dark stuff. I don't know. Am I happy with that? Some leaves have like um, spots on them, don't they? I was thinking some of these leaves without veins looked a little more like nuts, which is fine, but that's not what I was going for. Okay, let that dry again. All right, I'm gonna come in with the number or dot there. Just going for like graduated values here. Like you can see for this one, it's basically two tone. Got the light color and then I got the dark color on top which is fine. It's just another way of doing it. So if you wanted a really light um, something, that would be good. I already know that I prefer these two to this one. I mean, I like the look of it, kind of. I just don't know if I'd have the patience to start that light. I'm thinking not so much. 
I do want to try um, to make labels. What I'd have to do is I'm going to start with the dark though. And I'm just going to make I'm trying to stay in the middle of this one so I can possibly cut it down to make smaller labels. And yeah, for this one you need like a really almost dry brush. Yeah, I like these because they are um, darker. And I had way too much coffee on that brush at that time. I'm kind of scared that because they're so wet, as I continue to paint, they will um, smear more because they'll be moving. I think this one is ready. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, the coffee dried shiny. After it gets a certain concentration on it, it, it goes shiny. But what I'm going to do is take my Sharpie Ultra Fine. So far, this one outlines the best for me on watercolor paper. So I'm just going to do what I usually do, and that is roughly outline what I have here. It also doesn't really like to draw on the shiny coffee. Oh well. It's just another look. It looked fine without the outline too, but I like it with the outline. I really am liking the contrast between the shades of brown and the black. You know, I get the same feeling when I um, watercolor with paints. I don't love it until afterwards when it's outlined in black. I guess that's just what I like. So there, I don't have to add any gold to that because the coffee's already shiny. So I do like that. I guess these two would be kind of a comparison. This was after the the black outline and this is before. So to me, this looks okay, but this to me, like it brings it up a level. So I'm gonna try this one and see what happens because I wasn't really loving the lightness of this one. Yeah, see, it just needs a little more contrast for me. I wasn't going to do these dark veins with black. I figured they were dark enough, but... Nope, I'm liking the ink. The black. Yeah, I like this one. I probably would... You know, say that labels are my favorite, maybe because they're small. And you, you get the idea without, you know, there being a lot of it. But these um, so-called cutout ones, I think they'd be nice as well. I guess just it depends on how much you want to play with it and how long you're willing to play to get really good results. And I feel like 
I don't want my videos to be that long, so that's probably all I will do today. So thanks for joining me and hanging out. Be blessed, and we'll see you again next time. Bye for now.